Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sama. So in this video, I want to, you know, use this opportunity because like I keep saying, it's an opportunity to discuss some topics. Uh, we can all rub minds and learn and all of that. So I want to talk about this obsession, you know, not everybody, but there are some people, like some of our Nigerian men that believe, you know, marry a virgin and there's nothing wrong with that. I've always said it. There's nothing wrong with that. And I've said it that I have grown children and I've told them to keep the... I'm, but no, I'm not saying keep yourself or your husband or your wife. You know the way they say, it's the best present you can give to your husband on your wedding day. Me, I don't, I don't believe in all that. It's just a, about... A, it's a personal thing. I tell my kids, there's a time for everything in life. For now, focus on your college education. Focus, there will be a time for, you know, when you get to the point where you can marry and settle down. So, for it's not about keep yourself for... No, I, like for me, it's not about that. It's just about... You know how do i say it's about self right but, but there is this belief that you know marry your virgin blah, blah, blah. and i'm going to use this man as an example because you know this is what i'm talking about well as i always say sometimes you learn from your experiences and sometimes you learn from other people's experiences right and uh, that is life you know you can never have enough experiences in your life to learn from you have to learn sometimes from other people's and use it to gain more knowledge so i want to speak about this uh, ned moko because uh, there was an interview by bbc in which he said you know uh, i know i married all my wives as um, you know as virgins they don't ask him nobody asked him that question he just said it and it's almost like okay a thing of pride but at the same time it's almost like you know as if it's an important standard and stuff like that and i want to come and address the fact that now we are hearing that his other wife is gone. So now he has only one wife left for now. Basically, this video is about the fact that this man married several virgins. But he's lost them all except one for now. Whether Regina Daniel is a virgin or not, I'm not even going to talk about that because I don't know. So let me leave that because I always get comments people say, someone is a lie. She's not a that is all right. Okay, let's even say they were all virgins. So I don't even want to drag that because that's a different topic on its own. So and that's all. But let's say they were all. If it's such an important criteria for marriage to work or whatever, how come he has lost them all? People keep getting confused, right? He doesn't have any more wife anyway. Now it's only Regina that's left. For now. Okay? Because that one, whole world is still watching. So if we say he has several wives, he doesn't have several wives. There were only two left. So only Regina and the Moroccan girl now the moroccan girl said she has quit right she posted her quit notice on uh, instagram she has quit okay so there's only one left for now so if virginity is such an you know important thing in a marriage to work or to be great or to be how come he keeps losing them how come I made another video where I was saying that all these men that want to go to for small girls that are just starting life, 20 year olds, because according to him, the other girl to married her at 20. And to marry girls as virgins, they are most likely young girls. Because the older people get, I can tell you, for example, there's nothing wrong with being married earlier. Me, I settled down at the age of 21. Yeah, 21. So there's nothing wrong with that. What I'm saying is that the likelihood of a girl still remaining a virgin is they are still young. By the time they get to 25, 30, the likelihood is. Is, it reduces with time. Let me put it that way. I don't want to go to that. But it re reduces with time. But creating the impression that any girl that's no longer a virgin is not marriage material. You get my point. So men have that mentality. And then they go and marry these small, small girls. And they be, you know, these small girls that have not opened eyes. That are just starting life. You don't want to marry your age mates. And then you go and marry small girls. You say all oh, the grown ones have already open eyes. And then the small girl you're married, then they finally grow up and open eyes. And then the real them then comes out. And then the marriage is over. So are you not better off marrying the girls that have already open eyes? So you know who they are now. Not like this one, like I said in my, one of my videos, that are like eggs that have not been cracked. So you don't know what's inside it until they get to that age. If he keeps losing these virgins, is a sign that he's marrying them so young by the time they begin to realize who they are then they walk away because then they become who they really are so that is on one side but this is a man that had an interview which he said oh why you women are everywhere women are i don't know how to explain no women are surplus talking about him being married into polygamy although now he's no longer polygamous because he only has one wife now so if he's claiming that he's polygamous by nature he has to marry another one to prove that he's polygamous because like from according to them he only has one wife now abi okay now he was saying why you the women are surplus 
Pigeon English will say, they day nyafu nyafu. Women are surplus, but wives are few. Oh, oh. <laughs> women are surplus, but wives are few. Because there are a lot of women out there, does not mean all of them can be your wife. I hope I'm making sense. Because women are plenty, does not mean that a lot of them will want to settle down with you. So you can stay there and say, why would you have any love? No matter how surplus they are, how many of them will be willing to spend their life with you? If you keep as women, durably let rich, as women surplus rich, none of them is staying with him. They're not staying. That's not all of them. Only two were remaining. One has left. Now remaining one for now. I keep saying it for now because it's, we don't know. Uh, Regina is still a small gay. Okay? So he can't keep any of them. He can't keep them. He keeps marrying and losing them. What I want to point is this. This idea of making it look like the criteria for good wife is virginity or, you know, some of our men have this mentality that, you know, married virgins. Let me tell you, at the end of the day, you're better off marrying a girl that's not a virgin and have a long-lasting marriage than to marry the so-called virgin as if it's a criteria and then you are losing them up and down. But do you guys know the disadvantage of what is going on? Do you know the sad part of this whole thing is when you see, unfortunately, marriages do break up here and there. It can happen. And there are parents that have been good enough to, you know, find ways to make sure it doesn't affect the children's lives. We cannot come here and pretend. Can we imagine this man with so many broken marriages and these children do not have stable family units to grow up in? You know, so let's say he has some children in uh, the UK yeah, and all of that. So these children have been growing up without their father at all. So if he had married, I don't know how many, several times and he has broken marriages so many times, what about the effect on those children? Basically, one man has created so many broken marriages. One man, single-handedly, has created so many, several broken homes. That's not something nice. That's not something nice. You, you get my point. It's not about having children. You know, there was place to say he loves children. You know, and I'm saying if somebody loves children, you have not created an orphanage to look after. There are a lot of children in the world. You don't have to bring more children in the world to prove you love children. There are a lot of orphanages that you can support amazingly well. There's so much you can do for children, but I don't think he has, I've never heard that he has an orphanage. Let's not forget, a family is the basic unit of a society. Children are product of the homes they come from. When one man has created several broken homes, what you wonder, you know, in the life of those children, their mothers may be great and be able to give the children amazing life that they can come out and be useful members of society and not be psychologically damaged from, you know, coming from a broken home. There are some people that have done it and the children turn out right. But there are children that have broken home affect in ways that you cannot even put into words. One man has married several times and have broken marriages several times. You know, he comes out and they talk about his a billionaire, whatever they keep saying. Apart from, if you look at some of his children, they don't look well cared for. Okay, I'll give you guys an example. There was a video that was going around that time. They said uh, Regina Daniels bought one of Ned Moko's children a, a laptop. Or and this boy started crying. And if you've seen some of their video, videos, this boy is the most quiet one. I've seen uh, uh, pictures posted by his Moroccan wife. And it seems that that boy, from a very young age, from what I'm saying, you know, maybe you know, his mother was gone. And this boy is being raised by whoever is available to raise him. Because you can see that he's very quiet, he's attached to Layla, and you see him always, you know, attached to kind of Regina. And I'm always, be, I'm always like, where is his own mother? Where is his own mother? Because I don't know. Where is his own mother? She, Regina bought him a laptop, and this boy started crying. He got emotional. He was happy. He was thankful. And he started crying. And I thought to myself, so-called billionaire's son to be crying over ordinary laptop. What kind of a billionaire is that? We are talking about uh, DJ Copy's father. She be him, billionaire. He bought his uh, daughters brand new cars. They shared it on social media. They were happy, whatever. But for a billionaire's child to cry like a pauper when he was given a laptop, it shows you that things are not uh, as you think they are. For a billionaire's child, should not computer laptop should not be a big deal to a billionaire's child. So why is it such a big deal for this boy? Let me tell you another thing about men that marry here and there. Sometimes their focus becomes on the wife or some children and some will miss out. Why am I making this video? I want people to think about the real meaning of polygamy. The real effects of this whole thing. It may look rosy on the other side, but if you look deep, it's not as rosy as you think. Because there's no big deal. 
I can't imagine buying my children. For example, my children, okay, we have family computer that is general, right? But at the same time, my youngest daughter is 15. Laptop is compulsory because every school what they do now is they go to school with their laptops. So they are in class. They do everything on the laptop. They don't even write anymore. That is how things have changed. Laptop is not a big deal. You, you understand me? So, and I remember when I buy my children, you know, we have a family laptop, a computer. But when my children gain admission to university, the first thing I buy for them going back to school is a laptop. It's part of that. But, it, and they don't start, oh, they see it as you're buying the things they're they are using for school. It's not a big deal. So how does a so-called billionaire child cry like a pauper? Forgetting a lap. It's, it's not supposed to be a big deal for that boy. For the fact that it was a big deal. It shows you that on the inside, it's not what you think. It makes you question this picture, billionaire picture, they are showing on the outside. Is it really on the inside? You get my point? I'm saying this because I, I always say it. I want people to think very well about polygamy. Even monogamy, where there's only one husband, one wife, has its own problems. Then multiply and see the is even worse. It multiply it when you talk about polygamy because it's that times whatever number of people. One, I'm saying, if virginity was a quality or that is going to make a marriage perfect, right? Why is he no longer with all the virgins he married? Why did he lose all of them? He's marrying them, but he can't keep them. It shows that marriage is not about virginity. That's that's what it means. That's what it means. And at the same time, I'm speaking on the other side of people knowing what is important in a marriage. So women may have history, whatever their lives were. Maybe, you know, some girls had the baby out of wedlock. And so people come and laugh at them and say, you had a baby out of wedlock. And I made a video where I say, so people that are laughing at girls that had babies out of wedlock, the difference between you and them is that you have a child that is in the grave, but they have a living child as a proof of their error. But your own is in the grave, and you come and point at them and say, Hey, see how they out of a child out of wedlock. There are a lot of women that have aborted for, for men, but now they say, I never had a child out of wedlock. You have your child is in the grave. If you have done abortion, you have, but your own children are dead. You killed them. So before you point finger at girls that had babies out of wedlock, you feel like they're no longer wife material. If you have gotten a girl pregnant, or you're a girl that have gotten pregnant, and you guys aborted and whatever you did to those babies, at the end of the day, you have babies, but your own babies are dead. But the other women, because they carried their babies and gave them, gave them the chance to have a life and did not kill their own babies, does not make you holier than them. Let's remember that. I feel like I've addressed a few areas here. At the end of the day, virginity does not determine longevity of a marriage. It does not guarantee that the marriage would last. Ned Woko is a man that married several virgins and lost them all, except one, for now. For now, because we don't know tomorrow, okay? I'm not praying for anybody. I'm just saying, it's the fact. It's for now, because we don't know what's going to happen. I'm not praying for anybody's marriage to scatter, but I'm just saying, he lost several of them. Honestly, I believe that both of them will be afraid to lose this marriage. You know why? Because the world have said so much about their marriage that... They want to prove the world wrong. So it's almost like they're going to be trapped in that for a while because they want to prove the world wrong. That happens. Red Walker will not want to lose this marriage because people are going to say, you know what I mean? There is so much that... The same thing with Regina Dennis. A lot of people didn't know her until she married this man. And it, it, it was a big news because the man is 40 years or uh, something like that older than her. And that was why... Right. And that kind of gave her a lot of followers and blah, blah, blah. People that just want to come and see what the story is or whatever made them popular and whether you like it or not Regina is actually gaining from this marriage financially in a way that I don't know she's gaining it from the marriage as a you know apart from the man so-called being a billionaire being a so-called billionaire but if you see like all these uh, big ads and everything she's doing it's because of the number of followers she has on Instagram and it is this marriage that gave her a lot of followers because it's always in the news or blogs or whatever so they're making them notice on social media so she too is gaining from that marriage and she may want to hold on to it as well because okay Look at oh, this story about my marriage is always uh, giving me a lot of uh, attention. I want to keep it. So I believe that they will do whatever it takes to make it work because ah, the world will laugh at us. You know what I mean? People have been saying since, ah, they will not laugh at us. And at the same time, now Ned Woko said he's a polygamous man, uh, whatever way he phrased it, right? Now he has lost all of them, remaining one. If he stays with her, then, then he's not a polygamous man. Go on, he will have, well, he has to go marry somebody else to prove that he's polygamous. He has to. I don't believe he will do it because basically 
I see like he's at the mercy of Regina. Because Regina decides to dump him now. It's going to be something of shame. You know, it's going to be a thing of shame for him. They will be like, oh, he has lost all his wife. There's no le none left. You get my point. So, and he will not want to marry another woman and offend Regina. But anyway, let's see. Since he says the polygamy was, maybe he's going to marry another one. Let's uh, wait and see. In this video, basically, what I'm saying in this video is this that uh, virginity is not a sign, it's not a proof that a marriage would work. Because this man, according to him, married several of them. But he has lost all of them except one for now. That is one. And I want those kind of men that may be inspired by Ned Woko to sit and really get a better picture. When I talk about those other children, he cannot even have one-on-one -on -one relationship with this child. There are many. And these children, their mothers don't seem to be in the picture. And I'm talking about the boy that was crying because they got, got him a laptop. A so-called billionaire's child is crying for laptop. Billionaire's children will be like, ah, is it what make is it? You know me. A billionaire's child should have got to the point where a laptop shouldn't be a big deal for a billionaire's child. I'm not a billionaire. I'm not of my children. I never cried when I bought them their laptop. <laughs> it shows you that forget about social media. We don't know what happens in people's real lives. You know. And then when you see some of those other, some of them don't even dress as well as. You know, there's some of them, there's one particular boy that I keep looking at. The way that boy is looking, very quiet and very, I don't know, because I quickly feel for people, that boy does not, he doesn't come across like a very happy child. That's what I see, oh. That's the one that was crying when they gave him a laptop. I remember when the, the, the uncle said that it is the, his mother that is from their family. So his mother is the Woko, and he is answering Woko. You right? So there have been comments that, his mother had him, had him out of wedlock. And the reason it's believable is because in Nigeria, people have left comments. I remember there was the lady that left a comment and said she's from their town, you know, and said that um, his mother had him out of wedlock. So, but the, the reason why a lot of people believe that comment, which, you know, makes sense in Nigerian context, is that typically people don't, you know, it's unusual for a child to answer the, his mother's last name. It is his mother, it is his mother that's Umoko. So in most Nigerian culture, the only reason a child will be answering his mother's last name is if the bride price of the mother was not paid. If his mother had him before uh, out of uh, wedlock, it shows you that th this is life. These things happen. So to not come and create the impression that girls have to be virgins before they are, you know, as if girls have to be virgin before they can be good enough wife material or kind of even make it look like you know talk about you know i only marry virgins if everybody emulates a man like that somebody like his mother women the girls that had the children out of wedlock that means there should be no husband for them i'm making this video for those that may look and be inspired by somebody like him to let you know that whatever he has been declaring married virgin it didn't seem to work for him because he has none left and it's not a criteria Virginity is not a criteria for a great marriage. It's not. It's a good thing to keep yourself out of self-respect. There is a time for everything in this life. Right? But you shouldn't make it look like the girls that are not, are not worthy. And then people that think, oh, why do you have any Women are surplus. I'm telling you that women are surplus, but wives are few. Be wise. Don't go, go with somebody Say, yeah, be wise. Pray. And make sure that when you are choosing, you have the right criteria for choosing. That you will have a lasting marriage. Nobody wants to be married and be broken up. It happens, unfortunately. But if somebody has done it several times, it should be enough for somebody to sit back and say, ah, what is going on? So, like I said, I always use post stories as example. I've used my own stories too as example. Make sure when you want to marry as a man, as a woman, find out the right criteria for what makes a good marriage. Because this one has proven that uh, virginity is not a, a, a criteria for a lasting marriage. Don't, let's not look down on young girls that have histories. They are human beings that make mistakes. Doesn't mean that they cannot make good wives. Like I said, I wanted to use this, and I'm hoping that this is enough to make somebody think twice. It's your choice at the end of the day, but things like this will make you begin to think and balance your thinking like, okay, 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 and plan properly. If you see, ah, it don't work, oh, that thing didn't work, oh, that criteria is not necessary. That one didn't work. Learn from other people's experiences. That's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, as always, whatever your opinions are, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.